Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly, daily Wednesdays where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux and open source. I'm Vin Stone, joined every week by Jill Bryant and everyone watching us live on Twitch. A lot of stuff to talk about this week. Intel drivers, we got a new development kit for the not Raspberry Pi from Microsoft, and it doesn't run Linux. Stay tuned for that. But Let's see what's been going on. We did play a little bit of Trackmania last night, didn't we? Yeah, we did. We had some challenging tracks and we had two boss maps. Ven was sneaky. I he got him. Two I got him good. I got <laughs> yeah, him good. you did. I, I was playing along <laughs> with him. They're like, oh, this one's so tough, so tough. Okay, let's get back to that LOL map because we start with a fun, jokey map at the beginning. Yeah. And none of us could finish it, but mm -hmm. we were all frustrated. You know, that, that, <laughs> that joy, joyful frustration of like, let, let's go back. We got to get back and see if we can do that again. Yeah. And uh, it dumped into the real boss map. And we're like, what? It's like, gotcha. So, <laughs> what else have you been up to? Oh, boy. So I actually got a new cute kawaii penguin plushie to add to my collection. <laughs> but this one is ready for Halloween and dressed in a bee costume. Isn't it cute? <laughs> I have to show my Halloween uh, <laughs> penguin plushie. <laughs> Little bee. <laughs> so that adorable. That is truly horrifying. <laughs> it's so cute. <laughs> is that one of like, the actors in the new Jason movie? <laughs> no. <laughs> squawk, 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 squawk. Oh, man. Yeah, Mir in, in chat says that stings. Oh, it it does, but it's it's cute while it's doing it. <laughs> Tune into the video yeah. version. Go look at it, and you know, yeah. see, see if uh, I'm not responsible for any nightmares that may result from. Um, <laughs> yes, <laughs> the consumption of that man. I've been up to a bunch of fun things. Uh, Trek Mania. I'm working on a page because I'm getting a lot of questions about people I'm like, how do I get in? How do I get into the server and all that? Because, hey, it's a fun hangout thing that we do on Tuesdays and Fridays. Um, I'm going to put a page on our web zone with like instructions to make that easier for our uh, Twitch subs and patrons. But I've been on this adventure with this package that was supposed to come Monday. I take Mondays off. I don't do anything on Mondays. I try not to do anything on Mondays. I don't make plans to do things on Mondays. If something yeah. comes up, hey, whatever. But <laughs> it wasn't a big deal. I was at home all day, chilling out. And you know how you get when you're waiting on a package, especially if you're not going on, especially if you're staying at home waiting on that package, you know yeah. it's going to come at the very end of the day or the second you get in the shower or something like that. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> you just know. I was prepared for that. Like, I'm fine. I'm waiting on this package all the way to like six. And we're getting into the fall. So with it, like somewhere between six and 6.01, the light switch goes out outside. So it just goes from, hey, it's perfectly fine. And you can walk to the back of your house and look at the window. Oh, it's pitch dark outside. Fine. I'm waiting till seven. Hmm. Waiting till eight. Do, 8 30, 8 30, I give do, up hope. 8 35, I'm on <laughs> Google. How late does UPS deliver? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then I go check it, and I check it, and it's like, oh, no, it still says it's out for delivery. I get an update at, like, 10 p.m. saying, um, not even delivery exception. It says, hey, we're going to ship this to uh, UPS to be delivered. And I'm like, oh, so this guy apparently did the thing. Because this, you've had this happen with Amazon before. You'll order something on Amazon, and it'll go, like, half halfway to your house with UPS or FedEx, and last mile delivery will be USPS. I'm like, okay, fine, whatever. Yesterday, chilling out, waiting course it's going to show up never shows up says there's a delivery exception Aww. that it's back at the hub and i'm like i thought you guys said it was going to ups and then it was out for delivery again for a minute and back again so i don't know stay tuned next week and we'll find out what this insignificant little package is too i'm yeah oh boy i'm not even upset i'm having fun with it i'm like <laughs> i I've, I've screenshotted this adventure <laughs> of this very simple little thing but yeah, check i hope this it's out. not damaged I hope it's not oh, damaged or lost or something. <laughs> it, it's small and cheap enough to where I would not be upset with it. I just, oh, okay. I'm, I'm curious at this point. I, I want the explanation of like what went wrong in your system, UPS. But fourth gen Epic announcements are coming. Yeah, um, they are, Van. Pretty sweet. <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm so excited for the price of not the third, but the second gen Epics to get even cheaper. Because that's mm -hmm. what I'm looking at. That's mm -hmm. what I'm looking at. As soon as I get over the uh, price of that motherboard. And I got something planned for everybody. 
I talked about this a little bit on Saturday. You know, the past couple of years, the prices on used products, especially cameras and audio stuff, you know, people trying to work from home and all that fun stuff, has just Mm -hmm. been, it's been crazy. (laughs) It's been insane. You know, we were talking about even things like the Logitech C920. We were seeing those go for upwards of two hundred dollars. Yeah, some points, that man. was like, amazing. I like, saw two fifty one time. <laughs> I was like, "Oh my gosh!" Just ridiculous. And yeah. uh, you know, all the stuff I tried to do for the interfacing Linux and guides and hardware stuff like that is there's no value to it for the past couple of years. You know, it's, I love finding something like, "Oh, this is really cool," and we can use it with Linux and extract additional value out of it. You know, that's why I even seen like a lot of FireWire stuff and like that because delusional people selling you secure they're like oh i can get you know an extra 150 200 it's like no you can and Mm -hmm. so they've just been quietly waiting and prices are ticking back down there's a very interesting dlsr camera that i'm going to show everybody how to hack the firmware on oh nice it's one of those cameras that was just software limited you know if you plugged in you know your hdmi out on it it had the overlay yeah and the company was like, yeah, we, we, we just keep that on there. But if you buy the next model up, we remove it. Mm, nice. <laughs> oh, no, you know, you want to shake your fist at that. <laughs> you know, same hardware. They're like, no, we just want more money if we're going to enable the pro feature. So yeah, I'm going to show you to hack into it that. from Linux. Yeah. Take that off, get it set up. And they're really good values right now. The price is coming back down to like, ooh, good score. Also, oh, nice. Yeah. Kind of happy about that. And uh, audio production is in works. Uh, the Tascam 1608 US video, all that stuff, all the writing is done. I'm going to be pushing that out after midnight tonight. If you've been a patron, you've already seen the video, but I'll have all the compilation bits because that audio interface has got this really cool built in DSP mixer with over 280 controls on it and a slick GUI. It's got the compression EQ. Ooh. You can do all the volumes. And it it, it's a real mixer. It's got a full, it's got a brain box inside of it that, you know, you can program it, mm-hmm. unplug it from a computer and use it out and about however you want to do it like that. And that's really neat. Oh, that's sweet, Ben. Not cool. as neat <laughs> as the Intel art cards that I still can't buy Intel. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I stand oh. by what I said. You genuinely made 10 of the 770 16 gigs. You put four on Newegg and you gave them out to reviewers because they are not in stock. Those are not on eBay. Mm-hmm. And I don't really want one at this point, but, but <laughs> somebody has determined, uh, what did we talk about on Saturday? We, we, we Intel had came Release out. Released their official drivers. Yeah, official PPA drivers. Official PPA drivers that only worked on Ubuntu 2204. Mm-hmm. That's not the cool part. It <laughs> only worked on one particular OEM version of kernel 517 if you wanted DKMS. Ah, like, yes. What? <laughs> what? And if you've been following Linux, especially like AMD binary drivers for a little while, you know about the GIMP help, help file joke that we used to make because that was a one strange requirement in the um, binary AMD drivers. You'd get down to the system requirements and it's like GIMP help file support or whatever. Well, thankfully... Thankfully, Sean is going to try to simplify some of that. And this is uh, mm-hmm. bioslevel.com. All this is going to be in our show notes. With a little work, full 3D acceleration, hardware decoding and encoding for the Arc Series GPUs. This was kind of a fun read, you know. Yeah. Yeah, he was. was able to play around the official drivers. And, you know, I wanted to see how those worked out of the box. Uh, they didn't, apparently. At least for Sean, they didn't work with 2204, but... You know, as I said, that Intel guide required running that particular kernel and all that. He tried it. It didn't work. Unfortunately, he didn't exactly list what failed during that install. And I'd like to know. I'm pretty sure Intel would like to know, too. However, there's a workaround. And this setup, it's not bad considering. Basically, he's able to get kernel 6.0, the latest firmware for the kernel, the latest Mesa, compiling the Intel media drivers, and some added i386 bits just to get your Steam games up and running. However, I don't think this method is going to get you access to your compute, your OpenCL. And mm-hmm. that that's the stuff I really wanted to play with. So a little sad about that. But if you're just playing games, Jill, this should yeah, do this it for is, you, right? Yeah, he just was playing Borderlands in. too. Yeah, 
with the card in it, and it, it did a good job. And I just want to thank Sean Potter for, you know, documenting all your troubleshooting and creating a manual for those of us who want to play with an Intel Arc on Linux. I'm looking forward to getting one. I've been looking at the uh, um, A550, and it's been available um, every 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 few days, it seems, at, at the local micro center. So I've been wanting to, to take a chance with one of those <laughs> and play with it. And yeah, Ven, I I had heard that the new kernel 6.0 would be needed to to run Arc fully. So it was Intel. It was interesting that the Intel drivers weren't using 6.0, but was it five dot uh, five dot nineteen? Well, I think most of that is going to be based on the. Um, if you're going to use kernel 6.0, you're going to be using the open source Mesa stack. Oh, okay. And Intel, you know, with their binary blob stack, they're not reliant on Mesa. Oh, so they're oh, able okay. to use like whatever. I mean, if it works. And again, like you, I'm 100% curious, but I wanted to play with one of these. But even like the 770, the only thing anyone whose name's Ven Stone is interested in is the 16 gig 770 because it kind of sort of trade blows with my 3060 regular vanilla 12 gig. Mm -hmm. I wanted to see how they compare. And, you know, I don't want to buy something lower than that. I want to see if at least one gets maybe comparisons with the low end of last generation's Intel cards, not Intel, but NVIDIA cards. I mean, Intel, if you want to send me one at this point, I'll play around with it, but I'm not going to yeah. go out and wait for one. Try to buy it, especially, Joe, we got an AMD <laughs> announcement coming up. I know. I am really looking forward to that. Uh, my RX 6900 might become <laughs> the newest 7000 series <laughs> instead of buying in a 6900. 6, Maybe I want that 20 gig or 24 gig <laughs> card. <laughs> and we also saw the note from AMD. They're not going to be using the uh, special modified fire connector that uh, AMD is using on the 4090 series. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of a letdown. You won't be able to uh, always wonder whether or not the uh, new 12 volt power rail is just going to melt mm -hmm. you're going to miss out on all that fun with the amd cards oh There's yeah no that that's been so fun to watch with the nvidia cards and they even tell you this is how you're supposed to put the connector so there's not a bend near <laughs> near the terminal <laughs> and that's, you're like but you can't not bend it there the well i think that's what it's going to be teaching <laughs> you know especially like the nvidia the 4090s and i don't know if the 4080s use that same connector we're, we're, we're just going to because i know they use that connector on the 3090 ti or 3090 mm -hmm. i'm not completely but the connector's been in the news with a bunch of youtubers and a bunch of people because the reddit post yeah. you know there's <laughs> been three reports of this thing just melting frying yeah <laughs> to different degrees and uh here's here's what i said in discord a whole new generation the youngins and the children's they're learning the uh this is why you shouldn't wrench on power cables to try to make them look pretty. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. You can figure this Aww. out one way or the other. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Nine times out of 13. Oh, I got a problem, Then What's going on? Well, you see, I got the, uh, you know, 12 volt ATX or the uh, EPS connector. And you see, I got it wrenched around so you can't see. I'm like, yeah, you pulled this out. There you go. Click. Now it's back in place. Don't do that. Um. A whole new generation is going to learn the uh, mm -hmm. dangers of doing that and why you shouldn't. Yeah. I'm not a big yeah. fan of that. But even, even just hooking it up normally, it had issues, you know, without, it, with with the normal, especially if you have a case that has a glass, you know, uh, cover on it and you want it to, to come out forward. That's the normal. You click it in and you yeah. leave it alone. It's a yeah. delicate connector. No. <laughs> and I, I completely say this. Uh, if you look at uh, the thread repair system I have right now, and it's got one of those, uh, the 3060's got that connector like in the middle of the card. Oh, okay. You know, everything else is nice, clean out of the way, but uh, no, that can, that's just big, dangly, can, just hanging. Oh, there. yeah, yeah. Like, mine, mine do that too. You have to, yeah, I do it, you know, to, to le get, leave some slack in the cable so it's not. Being I got all bent. the slack. I, yeah. it's, just, it's just droopy. It looks horrible. I'm like, don't care. <laughs> don't care. I'm not it's messing nice around with it. Yeah. But you're not going to have to deal with that on the AMD cards. That's nice. <laughs> That's nice because AMD is, they, they came out and said, hey, we're not using that connector, by the way, which is neat. And you know what? That connector is not necessarily a bad thing. They need to work it out. The biggest yeah. thing with that connector right now is the power supplies that are intelligent enough to make sense of that connector properly. They're not really out on the market yet, so 
you know, it's mm-hmm. a little bit chicken and chainsaw going on. Yeah. However, I think it is, uh, Andy said, back on the third or whatever, they're going to be doing a live stream. So I'll be tuning in and watching that because my next card might be AMD. It's not going to be Intel. I've already made a, you know, would have been Intel like what, six months ago? 100%. 100%. Yeah. If they had released that 770. <laughs> and a while back ago, it would have been nice. <laughs> Uh, before I was able to get a hold of a 3060 or just like right at the same time, I would have bought it, went through the growing pains that you're going to deal with any type of new GPU on the market. I would have been happy with it, Intel, but those times in Intel knows these things. I Yay, Ben's going to have want, an AMD GPU. I, I, want I am so more, happy. <laughs> I, I didn't say I was going to buy one. In, in reality, here's what AMD is competing against. A working <laughs> solution. Because as much, isn't that right, Linus? That's right. Um, and NVIDIA, number one, 100%, and we're talking about the real line, it's not the squeaky one, is as much as you want to hate on NVIDIA, and rightfully so too, I know if I bought a 4060, you know, it's going to be boring, Jill. I'm going to buy mm-hmm. it, I'm going to plug it in, I'm going to install the drivers, and it's just going to work. Yeah. I'm not going to mess with it. I'm not going to be tinkering with anything. I'm not going to be downloading um updating mesa stack or having to get a special kernel for it like that's oh, boring i want something a little more exciting that's why i'm just got an eye out on amd yeah maybe especially if you get that av1 codec support which i think is coming <laughs> i know and but to see that that's where nvidia just has that stranglehold they're like oh you like the av1 yeah we have dual encoders on our car I'm like Damn. yeah <laughs> i know oh man oh man again if i find if i find an ARC 770 16 gig at a consignment shop for 99 cents. Unlike with the Steam streaming thing that I saw for 99 cents, I will in fact buy the ARC thing, unlike the uh, Steam. What was that thing called? The Steam. You know, they're little Steam arm box? powered. No. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're, they're, you know what I'm the, talking the, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I have one. <laughs> I have one. I'm spacing. I just <laughs> left it there. I left it there. Jill, tell me about this new canonical release Ubuntu 2210. It's oh, okay. So uh, Canonical has released Ubuntu 22.10 Kinetic Kudu with kinetic. major up. Uh, yeah, Kinetic. It's it's a fast moving Kudu <laughs> with major <laughs> updates and lots of new features. And one of the biggest updates lots of us have been looking forward to is the pi- that Pipewire is now the default audio system in Ubuntu 22.10 with the Wire Plumber Session being included too. And of course, we know, all know the benefits of Pipewire. Pipewire will provide better Bluetooth connectivity, improved performance for video conferencing, and better inter- integration of end user and professional audio tools. So that's really sweet. And boy, there is so much in this release we can't cover at all. So you need to go to the show notes and read through. We have uh, two links <laughs> for articles. And there's actually a, this, this release sees a new version of GNOME, GNOME 43, and it has a new quick settings feature on the top right of the GNOME panel and features a new pod-based system menu instead of the previous list-based one. And from there, you can just one-click to enable and disable Wi-Fi, VPN, Bluetooth, nightlight, airplane mode, and dark mode. And the network pod also supports in menu sub panels where you can select a different network directly no more pop up model or trip to network settings required which is really nice and convenient and one of my favorite new changes when i was going through um, the iso was now with the new quick toggles panel you can change audio input and output devices right from the menu <laughs> and that's very convenient instead of having to go to system settings so basically, I, I walking into this, Pavo. I'll be. Um, <laughs> so with the new Ubuntu, the first thing you got to take out is pipe wire. Got it. And, yeah. <laughs> uh, I mostly still use Pavu control, of course. Ven has trained me. <laughs> the, so, well, I mean, Pavu is doing everything um, <laughs> that it's intended to do. You don't even have to worry about it. it yeah. It's sitting in the background. The only exactly. time I run into problems with pipe wire is when I'm dealing with like low latency audio stuff, and that. Ooh no. Um, mm-hmm. Anything in there that really stood out? Uh, new GNOME forty three is pretty interesting, isn't it? Yeah, it it really is. They've it's so much it uh, more responsive and even more beautiful. And I I'm 
really happy because it's you know based on GTK4 now, which is right. it, it's really smooth and sweet. So it just makes everything zippy, zippier. And even the Nautilus file manager has a lot of new updates. It's more responsive and is better integrated with GNOME disks for formatting. And visually, it has been updated to look more modern and cleaner. And it's easier, when, one of the things I found out, that it's easier to select and copy multiple files in the list view by dragging a box around them and hitting, you know, a uh, copy or paste. And that just, it makes life a lot easier in, in that file manager. I don't usually use Nautilus because of some of these annoyances, but they are fixing <laughs> fixing them <laughs> that's good nice. it's always a fantastic way now I, this is yeah. using a end of life kernel i do see that uh, yeah kernel 519 hmm. yes yes hmm. yeah it's because it's because 6.0 uh didn't um uh come out soon enough for them to to integrate it so it'll be in the next uh release <laughs> and it's Oh, Nautilus is better integrated with. I do love GNOME Disk. Um, yeah, now, GNOME Disk. Somebody is who's great. I've been very. I don't use GNOME Desktop. I don't have anger or hatred towards it. It's just not the tool that I need for my job. <laughs> but I love GNOME Disk, and I've said this about several GNOME applications. Uh, that thing spoiled me. That thing's been so good for so long. Yeah, it really you know, has. Been installing using it a new drive, just checking something, and all that. Yeah. Um. You know, I had an adventure. I don't know, maybe a year ago when I put a uh, drive into the Raspberry Pi, an SSD drive, and I, I don't have GNOME Disk. What do I do? Yeah. Like, do I remember how to do this from the command line? It took me probably 40 minutes of um, smacking my head against the wall with because I, I wanted to do it without Googling. I finally figured it out. But yeah, mm -hmm. uh, GNOME Disk, excellent piece of software. And I'm glad to see And GTK4 stuff is pretty cool. It's yeah. pretty cool. Um, anything else in there that... Uh, just kind of jumps out at you. Oh, well, one of the big, big things also is that the new Steam Snap that's available in the Ubuntu software includes the latest Mesa. And, and we talked uh, about that a little bit on Saturday. On Saturday, yeah. If you want yeah. like a deep dive into that, go check out like Schemecast Weekly, last week's episode. That, that was like the use case, you know, because I said right at the beginning, I'm not going to walk out and just hate on Snap. Uh, you do you. But, you know, if you wanted to be having a uh, different versioning with Mesa, that might be a good idea, especially if you get an AMD card, maybe if you get the Intel card. That could be the use case for having a Snap, you know, Steam in a container because someone's like, hey, why don't you use the flat pack? Well, that's something that Snap thing can do. I mean, um, yeah, you can use the latest and greatest Mesas. <laughs> still got a two. lot of work to do to convince me that containerization on the desktop makes any sense. So that's just me. I'm yeah. just going to say that. It's better for server side. <laughs> <laughs> Have they uh, made any improvements on uh, sending advertisements in the uh, oh. when you run out? <laughs> yeah, that's still there. It's ah, uh, it's it's technically not. You know, it, it it's it's not there to make canonical money. It's more just a, as it's you know, an here advertisement. It is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's a good will. No, no, no. I'm trying to sell you something. Trust me. Yeah. No. It's, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's letting you know. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's letting letting trying know. to sell you something is what it's doing. I, well, yeah. <laughs> it's it's only trying to sell you if you're not using it for, with over five machines. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> oh, man. Ladies and gentlemen, that was uh, somebody saying, no, it's cancer, but it's a good type of cancer. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't have any whatever like if you're using a canonical you're using ubuntu you know what you get like hey be happy with it don't complain and yeah. you know this is the thing about linux we have choices you can go somewhere else if you don't like it and that's mm -hmm. fine now i made jill jump around because i wanted to get that discussion out of the way okay before we get into this which has yes. something to do with uh collecting vintage hardware and yes complaining that you can't run the latest and greatest on it, even though that you never really plan to, but you're just upset that you can't do it. Yeah, I am sad. So back in, in 2012, the Linux kernel stopped supporting the i386. And I was sad then for my old uh, 386 machines 
especially since the i386 CPU is what Linux, Linus used to create Linux on. So it's a very important processor <laughs> in, in Linux's history. Well, now the Linux kernel may drop support for the i486. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> so this news comes via post on the Linux kernel mailing list from Linus Torvalds himself, who states, we got rid of i386 support back in 2012. Maybe it's time to get rid of i486 support in 2022. Yeah, he does have a point. <laughs> and the new, the new kernels would run on uh, P5 uh, class hardware, newer, so Pentium or hardware are newer. So it, it's just, uh, yeah, it, it's the, the I-486 was, was always the uh, minimal requirement for, <laughs> for the Linux kernel for a very long time. So let it go, let it go, <laughs> let it go. <laughs> let it go. Uh, it's hard for me to let it go because then I can't update <laughs> <laughs> my 486 oh, to man, the latest that, version that is, of Debian. That is going to wreck your productivity, isn't it? You're like, <laughs> yeah. man, I was using that for some critic. Okay, check this out. <laughs> 486 architecture introduced in 1989. That was before some mm -hmm. of you there were born. Yeah, the well, year, the year I graduated. <laughs> two years before Linus himself announced the Linux kernel. I mean, this is this is not a young whippersnapper. This is not an up-and-coming architecture. It's been around. Intel discontinued i486 in 2007, which was more reason than I thought. I'm like, wow, that yeah. thing worked all the way up to 2007. They did. I think and it's because of NASA. <laughs> I think it's because all the little cheap embedded yeah. engineering boards laying yeah. around. Yeah, yeah, well, there's, there's that. If too, you really yeah. want to get scary about <laughs> NASA and 486, that's running DOS in Windows. <laughs> Oh, yeah, go look that up. Uh, now, the Linus has a point here. It's like trying to keep 486 alive is, you know, the kind of maintenance burden. They just shouldn't have to have that in 2022. And that makes perfect sense. Nobody tests for it anymore. And that is ended up with just a bunch of old code that we don't even know that works. So let's just get rid of it. It's bloat. Like, who wants to hang on yeah. to bloat? And what are we really hanging on to bloat for? Because industrial PCs. That was brought up last time. This, you know, somebody hinted at it and like industrial PCs. A lot of those are just running DOS, not Linux in the first place, but move to BSD or, you know, are you trying to tell me that system's online? Is it connected? Do you need the latest and greatest kernel? Why? Uh, and I, here's the thing I always throw out and I, I'm sure Jill, <laughs> you might take issue with it, but I, I love dragging this out. And it's like, well, you know, with vintage hardware, why not run a period correct kernel and operating system on it? Uh, well, it's 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 awesome to be able to do that to to test out. I've actually tested out running Blender on a four eighty six, a new version, <laughs> and it yeah. works. Well, it's Blender slow, was but it around. Works. Yeah, well, Blender was one well, new version. I wouldn't try that. But yeah. I mean, yeah, outside of. <laughs> Because I want to play with it, which is valid, which is cool. That's fantastic. It doesn't serve any. It's I, no, what, what I, Linus I know, but is, it's for for us, those of us who tinker and and the Linux. Linux is known to support older hardware and older architectures. So taking away is always a sad day because there's it's, always it's someone wonderful. out there who's who's using, you know, and even actually NASA on. Um, when, when they had the space shuttle program, they were using um, an embedded version of Unix on their 486s, and then they switched to Linux later. But, but you want to bet all of those were running like hardened 2.4x kernels? <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're very old kernels. Very, very old, yes. <laughs> and so, on very old computers, but that were hardened for space travel. If so. you um, <laughs> want to have a good time, go read through the kernel mailing list. And, you know, f fortunately... The blowback has boiled down to like, but I want to play with my 486, which is fine. Again, I don't have a complaint with that. But in reality, like, well, go play with your 486 with an older kernel. Yeah, it, it's older industrial and embedded that still have the 486s around. And they can yeah. install NetBSD or DOS. Yeah, this is true. Or an older version of Linux is, is fine for a lot of those machines. Don't tell them that. <laughs> Joe, they don't have anything to complain about. I'm like, no, we need to keep... And I understand. I understand, like, maintaining, like, crazy backwards compatibility. I get it. Yeah. I, I like that. But there there does come a point, you know, when 
the only time you're going to run into a 486 is, these days is on a vintage YouTube channel. Like, mm -hmm. I built a vintage gaming box, and you see the kids, they're building vintage game uh, PCs with, like, Pidium 3s. I'm like, geez, I guess, maybe. Yeah. Just go ahead and you can call <laughs> that vintage. <laughs> so, however it boils out, no one panic, because you'll always yeah. be able to run Linux on your i486. Yeah, there's there's distros out there that specifically support the three the 386 and the 486 <laughs> right. that'll, that'll I mean, do updates <laughs> and you get like 32 bit 64 bit you know like we I mean, yeah this, yeah you always be able to run the older stuff and the latest and greatest and I, I will say if you can show me somebody like actively like doing productivity jobs and work and stuff on a 486 i'd love to see you and shake your hand and say you just, <laughs> i, I want to read the rest of your fan fiction because just coming up with that. Now, if you like what we do, mm -hmm. you can help us out. You can always share the show, leave us a comment, a like, yeah. and do all that fun stuff. Unless you're like, even like it on Facebook. Facebook changed their interface. I have a Facebook business. Oh, they did, business. yes. Yeah, they, they like messed the interface all up. I was looking at the, um, I was trying to do the advertising for last week's uh, Linux Gamecast. And they, it's just like, ah, and I got all these weird pop-ups now. I'm like, fine, I'll deal with this later. Mm -hmm. But, you can help us by advertising the show. Share it if you like it. Head over to LinuxGameCast.com. We got a support tab. Yay. We got a patron uh, that's been around forever. We got merch. We got studio wish lists. And yeah, the best way to support us, Patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. Got a bunch of bonus sodas I'm throwing in there. More mm -hmm. than we should. Access to not just this show. This is just the creamy middle part. We got the full live uncut version each and every week for you. It's over an hour of Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays. If you need that tech in the background, something extra to listen to, we mm -hmm. got you covered. Same thing for Linux Gamecast Weekly, except it's not an hour, it's four hours of extra content. Also <laughs> yes. got a pre-pre-super shows. And Jordan and myself, we do a podcast called Wizards and Delete Expletive. I'll let you imagine what that is. <laughs> Over patrons, it's about the Rings of Power, House of Dragons, and it's about, because you know what they did, Joe? What did they do? I, um... Had a thing. Well, I talked about it like right at the beginning of uh, Trackmania last. Night. Oh, by the way, you get access to our private Trackmania server. Come hang out with us on Tuesdays and Fridays. Uh, mm -hmm. They found a way to make me watch Doctor Who again. Yes, this is very. It's very exciting. What I predicted would happen did. <laughs> I'm no spoilers. <laughs> I predicted it, but all the uh, leaked images came out. Last yeah. Year. Like, right. Um, yeah. Now. What got me really excited about it, because I watched the, I saw like, oh, look, there's a trailer for the upcoming special that was posted on the uh, Beebs Doctor Who channel. I clicked on, I'm like, oh, whatever, let's see what they're like. Oh, what? Okay. And it was like a minute and 30 seconds long, and I'm like, I'm sold. We're going to do mm -hmm. this. So our Wizards and Stuff podcast will probably uh, turn back into like Time Lords and stuff. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I, I got a feeling that we're going to be going back. To watch them to Doctor Who. We'd love you to listen, share your thoughts on that. We are available everywhere. Podcast, download, host, all that nonsense ourselves. And uh oh, we're on Spotify. We got the video thing. Our Spotify thing keeps growing like strangely because I think this is the third time I've ever mentioned that we have a Spotify video. Yeah. Production. Spotify is getting better though. They are. And the only thing when I say better, I mean on the technical back end, because it mm. used to be rolling the dice each and every week on whether or not they would process the video. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, it drove me up the wall. Like sometimes it would be like, I, I'd, I'd have to send the same video in like five times. Oh then boy. Then they would finally process them, like finally. Uh, anything else we got? Mm, we said the Trek Mania, we do that. We got the Pre Pre Super Show. We got the Wizards and stuff. Uh, we got our Discord, by the way. Yeah. We got Discord. No, we very do have IRC channel. Discord. <laughs> we have a very active Discord uh, yeah. compared to effectively any other Discord I'm a member of. And, uh, <laughs> we got that. You can sign up with that if you're Twitch or Patreon. We got that linked. Also, we got IRC, which is also linked to our Discord for the live channel. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah, just hop in there. And that's also linked to Twitch chat. Thanks to uh, Hemte Ed Strider in uh, the chat bot we have. What are we leaving out, Jill? I'm sure we're leaving out something. Ah. Uh, you you got everything, but we we all have wish lists. Uh, me and Jordan and Pedro. So make sure mm -hmm. to check those out. You can send us goodies and have ha send us a note that we have to have to read on the air. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. You can send Joe bees. Yeah. <laughs> you can send me more penguin plushies like this one. 
<laughs> oh, I guess I do want to thank MacGeek18. Thanks for the Twitch resub. And, oh, uh, nice. Chola... Chloe Cat Otter? I don't know. Chola Totter? I don't know. Chloe I think Tot... it's Chloe Cat Otter. Sub. Yeah, thank Your you, Chloe Cat Your new name Cat is Otter. Sam. Um, <laughs> <laughs> thank you for the sub. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen. It is time for a slice of pie. And this week... <laughs> Ah, uh, it's Microsoft pie. But you know, it says happy birthday, Justin. Yeah, you don't We're know saying Justin? happy birthday to you, Justin, in chat via a cake. I <laughs> typed in Microsoft cake, and this is the first thing I saw. And I said, How appropriate. <laughs> Justin gets to be part of the show this week. <laughs> there you go. Um, and that's another thing. Like, we, we have uh, two or three token Windows users in our Discord, too, and we love them to pieces. You know, yeah. you, don't, you don't have to be like, I run Linux all the time from my Windows. Like, no, 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 it's fine. Run whatever you want. Be BSD, uh, IRIX, we don't care. I had somebody um, hit our website running the original, not original, but like the like 4X series of Netscape. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I saw yeah. that pop one person. <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's interesting. But what are we talking about? Oh, we're talking about Microsoft. Uh, loves you know Linux. They love Linux. I, not really. Not this time. <laughs> Project, not Voltron. No, this is Project Volterra. It is their second ARM-powered mini PC with 32 gigajoules of RAM. It's the Windows Dev Kit from 2023. You notice how I said second because, yeah, they yeah. released one before. <laughs> Go look it up. I'm not going to do that research for you, but this is their second half attempt from Microsoft to release an ARM-powered dev kit for developers. Really surprised to see 32 gigs of RAM at this price. It is just powered by a Snapdragon um, 8CX Gen 3. Comes with 512 gigs of storage. Kind of makes it more of a like souped up mobile phone processor versus something that you would see in an M1 or an M2, much less an M2. The Windows Dev Kit 2023 is exclusive to, you guessed it, drum roll for no one here. Big surprise, Windows 11. No official support for running other operating systems such as also, you guessed it, Linux. So here's what I would like to say to everyone. How much is this mm -hmm. thing going to... Last year's... Uh, ECS Levia Q C one seventy, another name that rolls off the tongue. Oh, Hundred yeah. percent correct. Ours was their original. It only had four gigs of. Yeah, this much? one's five ninety nine. Five ninety nine is. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I have a link in the show notes for the official site, don't I? Yeah, you do. That's what I I'm do. looking at right now. Let me <laughs> pull that up. And oh, Microsoft, Microsoft, Microsoft. Yes, you gotta. <laughs> Five ninety nine. There it is. Ah, <laughs> uh, ah, uh, ooh. Now, okay. what I want to say is, Microsoft, you're absolutely right. Uh, there's no way anyone will ever be able to get Linux installed on this forever. Thank you for throwing down that gauntlet. I look mm -hmm. forward to seeing Linux running on it probably by the end of uh, December. However, yeah, <laughs> five ninety nine is more than i'm gonna pay for it <laughs> yeah it seems a little i would say to me around 400 would be good even though i know it has 32 gigs of ram i think 400 dollars is is an, a nice price to ask do you think that 32 gigs of ram is, is helping out with a wind bloat yeah <laughs> yes exactly <laughs> good point ben that's exactly why it that's just fair. runs windows 11 yeah and you know uh it it, it they they say Microsoft uh, says it it does they don't want their devs to run Linux I guess lol <laughs> it just says Windows <laughs> but we know that's not true uh, yeah and what is what is nice is this box can connect up to three monitors using its two USB C ports and a mini Display Port and two of the displays actually can be 4K at 60 hertz. And, uh, you know, this dev kit has three USB-A ports, gigabit Ethernet, Wi-Fi 6, and Bluetooth 5.1 support. So it's a pretty nice box. And uh, our um, wonderful Justin in chat said he's um, ordered one and one's on its way to him. So nice, Justin. <laughs> By the way, this thing is made with 20% recycled ocean plastic because they need to... Oh. They yeah. needed to let you know that just in case that's, that doesn't make up for Windows 11. Yeah. It doesn't make up for Windows on ARM because it genuinely feels like each, every now and then, a, somebody at Microsoft goes, 
we have a version that kind of runs on ARM because we are, I, I've said multiple times in the past, I'm like, oh, yeah, well, you can always put Windows 10 on a Raspberry Pi if you uh, don't like that Raspberry Pi or yourself. Yeah. And so. um, <laughs> this is what I want, though. This, we were talking in the pre-show. Mm -hmm. I said, give me something roughly like this. Now, here's the problem. Here's the real problem Microsoft has. This has nothing to do with like what Apple is trying to get away with. But they need to come up with something at least a half measure. This is just repurposing existing silicon from mobile devices, slapping 32 gigs on it and a drive and going, hey, look, it's a desktop computer. No, it's not. Not even a little bit. Uh, what we need is maybe not a custom silicon solution from the ground up, but something more reflective of what you would expect performance wise for a desktop machine. You know, something like i i5 i7 performance you know give me something like 16 performance scores and you know a big little design keep that 32 gigs around get the nvme on there a good development board that is a legitimate low-end desktop replacement yeah that can run things at speed that requires cooling you know yeah. something with a little <laughs> bit of power then you say okay then it's 500 dollars. like well maybe because when you say hey look <laughs> Here's a mobile phone with 32 gigajoules of RAM slapped on it. How much? 500 bucks. I'm like, how about I just buy a Steam Deck? Um, yeah. That's why Ven wants a Steam Box. <laughs> that that would exactly solve your problem. exactly what I want. <laughs> exactly what I want. I want the Steam Deck without the... I want this, but, you know, let's, let's scrape the Windows stuff out of it, you know, and like rip that out and we'll just <laughs> shove some uh, Valve stuff inside of it. That's This is exactly the device I want. Yeah. But... So true, Ven. So true. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they, they got to do something a bit more, you know, um, Apple, when they were pushing it, you know, cause Apple has experience flipping architecture, you know, starting out with risk and moving X86 with mm -hmm. Intel and now moving over door. They had the thing, you know, and there was a bit of controversy about it with the getting the M1 dev kit. You couldn't own it. You had to send it back to Apple. Yeah. But Apple was smart. It was very affordable, like to effectively lease it. But Apple also gave you a credit. Like when yeah, you send it back too, it made it extremely cheap to get this in developers hands to the point of, you know, somebody was sitting there like, yeah, I might as well just get one and play with it at the very least. Microsoft walking out with this and going, give us 600 bucks. Mm -hmm. Microsoft doesn't expect any adoption on this. Yeah. And they need it. They need it. They, they need, need it. <laughs> people working on this and Apple doesn't, not Apple, but Microsoft doesn't have the answer that is Rosetta for, because, uh, x86 it's getting towards the end and i'm saying like mm -hmm. 20 years away from the end but what we want is low power um yeah high performance arm devices on the desktop or whatever the desktop's going to look like in 10 or 15 years because it's probably not going to look like what we have under our desk right now if you have your pc on top of your desk next to you, you got bigger problems so don't worry about anything i'm saying and uh yeah mm -hmm. good luck with this i again i, I look forward to seeing uh, how well linux runs on it yeah <laughs> it's going to run beautifully, of course. <laughs> All right, Jill. We're a little over time by a bit, yeah. but we had fun. We had a lot to cover. Yeah, and we did. We <laughs> also learned that your husband is on IMDb. Yes, he is. He is. <laughs> Let's roll some credits, everybody. We'll see you next week. <laughs> yeah. Do I get a credits button? Yeah. yeah and then before we were trying to think of the steam device uh steam link, that, uh, steam link. yeah <laughs> i was just i just remembered it <laughs> the steam link <laughs> yay thank you arthur and, o and omegas our advisors and our executive producers barbara and scott m atomic mike empty <laughs> I'm, we're getting there abstraction yeah. and super death stood bringing up the chicago area <laughs> on business along with our sea monsters including Renal, dsn Darkwing, joe system t Dancing Joe, <laughs> Death Notes, lots of us, including me and my husband. <laughs> Mice type. <laughs> yeah, that I can't read. I'm going to be really dumb. Episode 349. <laughs> it was a thing. <laughs> me, Jill, and the bee penguin. Yeah. <laughs> bee penguin. <laughs> it's horrifying.